delighted to be back in India, or may I say, incredible India. This nation has achieved tremendous development and prosperity and possesses so much potential for the future, which is a sentiment of the successful and visionary policies of the Honorable Prime Minister. It is a distinct privilege for all of us, sir, to have you inaugurate this important event. I also want to thank the Honorable Dharamendra Pradhan, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, and indeed the entire Indian government for this incredible hospitality and organizational effort to host this impressive gathering of energy ministers, CEOs, and international energy organizations. It is very fitting that this IEF ministerial meeting is being held in a nation which over the coming quarter century will see the fastest energy demand growth in the world, accounting for almost one third of total energy demand growth. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that the world is undergoing an energy transformation. But much of today's energy debate centers on the pace and scope of this transformation and the optimum way forward. I, for one, strongly believe that for a long time to come, the world will need all energy sources including increasing volumes of oil and gas. So we must have a dual purpose. First, we certainly need to develop new energy sources and technologies. But second, we must continue investing in those existing energy sources, which we know will be needed for the foreseeable future. In other words, we need to take a holistic view and consider the totality of energy, meaning the sum total of all forms of energy throughout their value chains, from production through consumption. In my mind, this is the recipe for an orderly and successful transformation. In Saudi Arabia, we've adopted this approach and continue to strengthen our oil and gas businesses while concurrently developing renewable energy, in which we also possess great potential and intend to be a global leader. This emphasis is expressed in the recent announcement by our Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, of a $200 billion investment to develop 200 gigawatts of solar power, one of the world's largest ever solar programs. Ladies and gentlemen, when we discuss energy, we must keep in mind the issue of energy accessibility, adequacy, and affordability, especially since energy is such a pivotal driver of economic growth, job creation, and the ability of people to raise their living standards. Likewise, we need to consider the environmental aspects of energy in order to achieve economic development and protect the well-being of our planet. This was eloquently stated by the Honorable Prime Minister in the video we just saw when he talked about energy access, energy efficiency, energy sustainability, and energy security. One guiding principle of the Paris Agreement is that global climate actions must be taken within the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. So as we move toward implementing the agreement in 2020, we must reduce the impact of greenhouse gases in a manner that minimizes risk, risks to energy security, cushions economic impacts, and preferentially 
focuses on sectors that, develop, that deliver the biggest bang for our buck. And as we gather here in India, we must take note of the visible economic, energy, and environmental challenges faced by developing nations, while calling on industrialized nation to take the lead from an equity perspective. We therefore need to promote more pragmatic energy policies for the future, keeping in mind the complex factors involved, the fact that countries are at different development stages and the rapidly changing technological landscape. That is best accomplished through discussions like the dialogue we're kicking off this morning, which is most fruitful with the full involvement of key stakeholders under the IEF umbrella. I am glad we're able to bring together such influential agencies as the International Energy Agency, OPEC, the Gas Exporting Countries Forum, the World Energy Forum, and the World Petroleum Council, amongst others. The IEF has done a tremendous job of advancing consumer-producer dialogue, but it would perform another invaluable service by organizing the effort to develop an optimum energy transition blueprint. I also believe the importance of the global energy dialogue has never been greater than at the present moment when so many uncertainties around the energy market. 